We all have a past. And sometimes our past can be very daunting. We have memories, we have failures, we have successes. There are different things that we can find in our past. The question is, do you want to stay in your past? Your past can hold you back on so many levels. And I think one of the biggest challenges is to forget and let go of your past. People may have done you wrong. You may have done people wrong. There are different things that you can do to help you move along and move forward. Closing the chapter of the past is something that is essential. It can be very necessary. It is necessary. And letting go of the past is what we're focusing on today on The Well of Inspiration. Wellington joins the Cradle of Life on the Well of Inspiration for another episode right here, inspiring you, motivating you, and helping you take your personal life and your business to the next level of success. Wellington, welcome on board again this week on the Well of Inspiration with the Cradle of Life. It's good to have you. Thank you so much, Dawn. I'm happy to be back here, and thank you so much for having me. Wellington, thank you as well for being here. We absolutely love this and we absolutely thrive on the well of inspiration as we do know our viewers as well thrive on the well of inspiration. It's all about the magic that is Wellington. <laughs> Tell us today, Wellington, what are we talking about on the well of inspiration? You know what? I want us to, to talk a little bit about the past. So as you know, we, we learn a bit from success, but we don't learn as much from success as we learn from failures. Failure tends to be the greatest teacher. In fact, when they say experience is the greatest teacher, usually it's experience that involves some level of failure. But one thing I find interesting about these moments where we failed or we have looked back and things did not go the way that we wanted them to go, it's really because failure has a past tense to it most of the time. You never look at failure as a futuristic activity. It's always looking back and seeing what has happened. And the thing with looking back at what has happened is that looking back has a soothing feeling to it. It's a familiar place. It can be so familiar that it becomes addictive that it becomes your go-to place. When you feel a certain kind of way, you roll back to the past. When you feel a certain kind of way, you, when you're dealt a certain kind of blow by life, you roll back to that position that you've experienced before in the past, which is your zone of comfort, so to speak. But I just want to say to you guys today that as we seek to achieve things in our lives, as we seek to set goals and go on and achieve them, as we seek to make a difference for our families, for our societies, and become live the lives we so desire to live on our own, we have to learn to let go of the past. It is, it is not easy. We hold on to things. We love them. We go back to them all the time. They sound familiar. They vindicate us. Sometimes they confirm what we always thought. What we thought we knew is confirmed by what has happened. Familiar place. But is it the right place for you to be at any given time? It's important sometimes, my friend, that as we go forward, we learn to let go of the past. That's what we are talking about today, letting go of the past. Fantastic, Wellington. And I know this can be so difficult on so many levels. And, you know, there are different things in your past that you need to let go of. It's not just one particular thing. There are certain things that we are so used to and accustomed to. It's a comfort zone. But there are those things that are actually holding you back because you're living in the past of maybe what it might have done for you back then. It's not doing the same thing that you needed to do today. So you need to let go of it. So there are different little things. I know that individuals, we face different challenges, different things that were in our past that we hold on to. And I know today on The Well of Inspiration, you're going to enlighten us and allow us to look at things differently and move away from the past by letting it go. 100%. Look, so what you got fired, right? So what you got rejected by someone you, you loved. So what you, you, you went through a process of, 
of failure and, and, and pain. So what you've gone through this? So, so what something wrong was done to you by somebody? It has happened. There's nothing you can do about it. Looking back now and trying to, to embrace it again and reliving those memories will simply just draw you back and set your mind off the things you should be focusing on. And that's why I want today for us to consider some strategies that we can implement as we seek to find ways to let go of the past. And let me begin by reminding you that letting go of the past is not something that will just happen just like that. But was speaking to you right now, I'm a person who's gone through so many difficult circumstances in my life. And I can tell you that it is a process to let go of some of these feelings, some of these, some of the hurt, some of the pain, some of the elements that have affected you negatively throughout your life. Letting go of those things, it is not so easy. Sometimes you almost feel like you don't want to let go because you feel like if you let go, then you forget what happened and maybe you might then be blindsided again. So you want to constantly remind yourself, live in that space so that when it comes, you know it's coming and you can avoid it. <laughs> this is what happens to us sometimes. But here's the reality. It is true indeed. But we've got to accept the reality of what has happened. What has happened in the past has happened in the past. There's nothing you can do today to change what has happened in the past. The only thing you can do is to change yourself to become a person who is able to move into the future despite what has happened in the past for you. Things may happen, things will happen, but when they do happen, what is going to happen to you? Are you going to allow this pain? Are you going to allow this struggle from the past to stop you from moving forward into the blissful future that is possible for you? Think about that for a minute. Wellington, I love this. I love the way you say change yourself to move forward despite the past, despite what you have been through. Move forward, propel yourself, get yourself to move forward. That, I think, is very key for people to go to the next level, to move to the next space. Absolutely. You are so right, Don. And you know what? Um, when you go through these things that happened in the past, you often, often the things that happened to us that hurt us the most are done by the people who are sometimes very dear to us. So much that we carry resentment. And it's not easy to let go because sometimes it is a person that you actually get to see every day. You sit on the same dinner table with and have supper and that person is the same person who hurt you. So it's not easy to just let go. But I would like to suggest to you a certain formula that I have come across over the years and that I've used personally and I found it to really work. And this formula involves you taking a notebook and writing down a few notes. A few notes that will help you to process what happened in the past and enable you to download your mind onto a piece of paper in order for you to get ready to get rid of these thoughts. The thoughts and the feelings. So I've got four things I want you to do. When you get your piece of paper, when you get your notebook, your diary, whatever it is you have, first of all, write down a list of all the people that you feel you have wronged. Just in case you have done something wrong as well to another person, list down a few names of people that you believe you've done wrong to. Once you've done this, list down a list of every person you believe that you owe an apology. Anyone that you know that you may have done something wrong to from the past, you did something and you know you needed to apologize to this person, but maybe you never got around to apologizing because of circumstances, because maybe you were in a different mind space at that particular time, write down their names, recognize them, and remember what it is that happened that got you to that place. Once you've done that, flip, flip the switch and now write a list of every person that has wronged you. Every person that you believe has done wrong to you, write their name down. Recognize what they did that you believe was wrong to you. 
and then carry on to do the same thing by writing a list of everybody you believe owes you an apology. Everybody you feel owes you some kind of apology, write their name down. When you do this exercise, my friends, make sure that you are very, very honest with yourself. I recommend that you don't do this with anybody watching. Be in, in an isolated place by yourself, thinking clearly with no interference from anybody. Write these things down and answer these questions honestly. Who have you done wrong to? Who do you owe an apology? Who has done wrong to you? And who do, who do you believe owes you an apology? That's the starting point. Once you've done this exercise, my friends, I want you to, think, to, to recognize this. It's going to get very emotional because you will start to recognize the pain points and the people that caused the pain points. You will start to recognize the pain points and you will see yourself causing pain to another person. It may be very emotional for you. And I encourage you when you do this to not type on a keyboard, take a pen and write physically. There is an emo there's a transmission of emotional energy that happens when you write down an emotional moment or an emotional statement or when you process an emotion through writing on a piece of paper. There's something magical that happens when you do that. So don't do it by typing on a, on a, on a keyboard. Take a pen, take a paper and write it down. Once you've done this, you will need to move to the most critical part. And I think, Don, before we get to the most critical part, let's take a break, drink some water, and when we come back, we will talk more about the most critical part of you letting go of your past. Welcome back to the Well of Inspiration and today it's a powerful one right here on the Well of Inspiration. It's all about letting go of the past, something that I know we find so difficult to do, the different things that might have happened to you, the different situations you might have found yourself in. Letting go of the past is very difficult. Now, we've spoken about failure and how failure is part of the process and you know when you go through failure, like Wellington says, it has a past tense that is attached to it and he says it, it, it's you looking back. Failure is always about the past tense most times it happens in the past and I think sometimes we hold on to those different things now Wellington says he has different strategies and he's given his strategies and he says it is a process it can be very difficult to let go of the past because you are stuck in it there are different things about the past that you might want to hold on to if somebody has wronged you so that you never forget that person wronging you or that situation that you know you found yourself inside and allow yourself to say okay I will not let go of this because in future I might go through the same thing so you hold on to it not realizing that it's actually holding you back letting go of the past absolutely critical now he's talked to us about considering different strat strategies and he says he has a formula that he's actually used and it works now the first thing is to list uh, uh, the, all the names of the people that you have actually wronged whoever you have wronged list down their names Put those names down on paper. He says, write this down. Do not type it out. There's something magical, and I agree with him, when you write things down. The next one is, put a list of everyone that you owe an apology to. And it's so difficult for people to do this, I think. You know, when you actually have to accept that blame, the different things that you've done to people, write your names down. And then flip it and make sure that you put a list of everyone you feel has wronged you. Put those names down and also a list of every person you believe owes you an apology. And Wellington says this is something very emotional. And just thinking about it, it's something that can evoke a lot of emotion and it's a process that can allow you to let go of the past. Wellington, back to you. 
Thank you so much, Don. Now, as I promised, we're going to get to the most critical part now because this is the part that drives the real transformation, okay? Because what we talk about here is information and strategies that can help you to transform your life, to move you from where you are to where you really want to be. Now, now that you've listed the people that I gave you in the beginning, you have to figure out how to express your feelings towards these people. This can take two forms. Number one, either you find a way to communicate to the people your feelings about you doing wrong to them or them doing wrong to you, or you giving an apology you've never given before or requesting an apology you've never been given before. Okay? Now, there are times when you can approach someone and have these conversations. But there are also times when you recognize that approaching the person may do more harm than good. There's a way to deal with this. So first of all, consider approaching the people respectfully and having a conversation about the way you feel there's something that releases the negative energy from you when you let go of what's in your heart and letting it out to the other person. However, if it so happens that it's not easy for you to communicate actively to these people, you may write to them. You may sit down, write a letter, write an email, write a WhatsApp message, and, and communicate the same thing. But here's the most critical part. Sometimes going to someone and speaking to them or writing to them may not yield the result it's expected to, to yield, especially when, you, when you're talking about a very painful situation. Something that I've seen work is that you yourself, because remember you're doing this for yourself and not for the other person, is that you write down the way you feel. Write it as if you are looking at the person that you are supposed to be communicating this to. Write it down. Express everything. If it means shedding a tear, shed the tear, but put it all down. When you finish, give yourself some time. Read through everything that you've said. And then take that piece of paper and tear it up into tiny little pieces or burn it with a flame. And as that paper is burning or as you're tearing up that paper, see in your mind all the negative feelings being torn apart and thrown out of your heart. This is a very effective exercise, the benefit of which is it releases the negative energy, the toxic negative energy that might sit with you because of events that happened in the past. My friends, I have to tell you, this is not an easy exercise. This is an exercise that takes a lot of conviction, a lot of a lot of tenacity on your part because you are basically going back to relive a painful moment you probably just want to forget. But what's important is that you are now letting go of that negativity out of your mind, letting go of the past, like really letting go, removing the baggage from your mind onto a piece of paper and then burning that piece of paper, removing the baggage from your mind into a conversation that will probably yield a positive result. You know, there are certain cases where you go to someone and you tell them how you feel about a certain situation and you discover that the person maybe was not even aware that they hurt you. There are times when you may assume that you hurt someone so bad and you owe them an apology, but when you go to talk to them, you recognize that this person didn't take it to heart as much as you thought they did. This is a possibility. But be prepared for surprises. Okay? 
there may be people you go to, to talk to, believing that whatever you're doing will yield a positive result, and they might turn around to you and say, hey, leave me alone. I don't want to have this conversation with you. Whatever you did, you did. You knew what you were doing, and then they throw it back at you. Be prepared to deal with that. When you see that this is the case, then go back and invoke the other strategy I gave you. Write it down. Put it on a piece of paper. Express yourself still but make sure you get rid of it in the end. When you do this, you are allowing yourself to move into the future with a lighter burden, knowing that you have done your part to let go of the feelings that are negative from your past that may, that may hinder your progress towards the goals and the dreams that you want to achieve. Try this. And I would love to hear from you how this works for you. If there's anything you think we can do to help you, please do get in touch. Wellington, this is absolutely powerful stuff. And I, and I think if we could all just do this, put these things down in place, approach these people, whether it's somebody you've hurt or somebody you feel has hurt you, it really does help you to let go. And I think also, as you've said, do not expect. I think going in it for yourself without that expectation of, you know what, I'm coming to apologize. So, you know, you expect somebody to accept that apology. Go in knowing that it could go either way, whether they accept it, whether they don't. Just know that you are going in doing the right thing for yourself. And ultimately as well for that person to see that, you know, I know I made a mistake and I'm owning up to my mistake. Whether they accept it or they don't, they do know that it's there and you've presented yourself. I think it's absolutely powerful. Absolutely. That is so true. And you know, letting go like this, using the different strategies we've said, empowers you. It empowers you to move into the future and make decisions from a, from a more relaxed, wiser, and more informed point of view. You make better decisions for your future when you've let go of the baggage from the past. This is not easy, but it does help. Fantastic. I'm loving this episode and I think a lot of people who, who will take the time to watch this episode will find that these are the different things that they can put in place that will allow them to let go of their past. If you have any questions for Wellington, please don't forget to place a comments in the section below. You can get in touch with him. Well of Inspiration has a website, www.wellofinspiration.com. They also have a Facebook page and an Instagram page. And you could also reach out to us here at the Cradle of Life. Don't forget to share, subscribe and be a part of the journey that is the Well of inspiration. Before we wrap up Wellington, final words for our audience. You know what, L let me just close by asking a few questions. What are you holding on to from your past? Who are you holding on to from your past? What situations have you experienced that you are not letting go of? My friend, now is the time for you to think about letting go. Let go of those things. Do what is necessary to clear your mind and relieve yourself of the baggage from the past. Remember what I said, you cannot walk into the future while carrying the baggage from the past with you. Let go and carry a lighter burden and allow yourself the creativity and the knowledge and the power to cultivate a life you want based on the decisions you make for your benefit and not informed by past circumstances. This is absolutely food for the soul. Wellington, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to hear what you have to say today on this subject on the Well of Inspiration. Thank you so much, John. It's been a pleasure being here this week and I wish you a tremendous week ahead. And the same goes to you and I'll catch you on the other side. Thank you. Take care.